we're going to talk about the difference between average rate of change versus instantaneous rate of change. You ready? Let's do it. So if you go pick up any calculus book, the very first example it uses is Galileo's freefall law, where basically he dropped two objects at the same time um, to see that the distance proportional to the square of the time it had been falling, that they end up the same. So if we let y equal distance fallen in feet after t seconds, then this is Galileo's free fall law equation, uh, where 16 is the constant of proportionality. Now, if you Google this, you might say, uh-uh, this is actually it, because typically formulas like this, they do put um, in the metric system, meaning in meters. So it just depends on were you given the information in feet or were you given, given it in meters. All right, so how do you find average speed? Like if I asked you, hey, you went to your grandma's this weekend, what was your average speed? How would you find average speed? Think about your miles per hour. And so this is where we kind of get into units, right? So if I just think right away, my average speed was what I traveled in miles per hour, that's my distance covered over my time elapsed, or the change in distance over the change in time. And if you hear when I say that, the change in distance over the change in time, sounds like a slope formula, right? Ha ha ha! Let's say you committed a murder. You killed me. I don't know why you want to kill me because I'm your favorite bio cow teacher, but you killed me. So what we're going to look at is you have a murder weapon. It's a toaster. You killed me with a toaster. And so after you killed me, you decided to go run to the top of the Towers of America. Why? There's a restaurant up there. You can, you know, eat, have a couple of drinks. It'd be all right. And you drop the murder weapon, the toaster, over the side of the Towers of America. So what, do you, what you want to do is look at what is the average speed the toaster is traveling the first two seconds of the fall. Well, let's think about this. Average. I know things about average rate, and we just talked about how do you find average speed. Well, we take the change in distance over change in time. It just so happens now that my distance is being measured in feet, and my time is in seconds. But nothing, nothing different there. So again, my change in distance over change in time, slope formula. Slope, 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 slope. So what I'm looking at for this average speed then is the average speed during this interval of time. And I find this by dividing the distance, the change in distance over the change in time. So let's say we continue looking at this and you know we said from zero to two seconds, the first two seconds, so from right away zero to two, how fast does the toaster fall? So looking at this change in y over change in t, looking at our change in feet over our change in seconds, we're just simply going to use a slope formula. Now, the problem is, is most of you are used to plugging in y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And what we're going to do is I'm going to show you that you could use functions. Think about it. We say, in fact, in fact, look at, look at, look at, look at, look at, look at, look at here if I can figure out how to look at here. There's somewhere I can, yeah, do this down here. There we go. <laughs> I found it. Y'all thought I wasn't going to find it right there. All right. So we remember when we say y, we could call y a function, right? And so you don't have to always have y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. You could, your y could be a function. Well, in this case, we're throwing something off the side of the Towers of America, and hence we're using Galileo's free fall law. Okay, so that is my function right there. So my f of t in this case would be the 16t squared. Now, if you just flat out graph this, okay, and it looks like, hey, the toaster's flying up. No, this is the distance traveled. Okay, so my distance over time. Then I could just look at this, looking at my average rate, and just say, well, it traveled from 0 to 64. Where'd you get 64 from? 
smart, right? No, if, if my time is from zero to two, if I plug in zero here, I get my y, zero. If I plug in two, then I get my y, two squared, four, four times 16, 64. So that's how I get the, these two values. Now I have two points, okay? So I can look at the same thing as just simply averaging these two points. All right, let's say that, so that was from zero to two seconds. Well, what if I wanna change up my interval? You know, not like the start to two seconds. I wanna go between one and two seconds. What if I want any interval? That's going to be the key to calculus right there. I don't wanna keep doing this for every single interval and I don't wanna do it really for intervals. I wanna get an exact value, an, an exact second of time. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna figure out how we can manipulate this slope formula in a way that I can say, well, this will work for any interval of time. All right, so basically what we do is you start out with the time you're interested in, maybe it's one second, and then you go to another second, say two seconds, whatever, okay? So this would be my average rate of change, and this would be my formula. This, once again, is my slope formula, okay? It's going to be my change up here of my distance over my change in time. Watch that formula as I manipulate some things here. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, why call this another variable? I would like to only have one variable. Isn't from here to here, this variable plus whatever that distance is? Yeah, so let's just call the distance H. So instead of calling this T1, we call it st our starting point plus whatever that distance is. That distance being H. So now watch my formula down here where I had T1, I can plug in T sub zero plus H. The bottom, what was the bottom before? T1 minus T sub zero. Well, that would be the same thing as this change in T which would be, how do, you, how do you find distance? Like if this is three and five, you say the distance two. How'd you do that? Five minus three. So you do the same thing, right? T sub zero plus H, all minus T sub zero. T sub zero's cancel and you just get H, so that becomes the denominator. All right, we're looking good. Well, what I could do then is say, why am I so far away? Why not get closer and closer? Because I want an interval okay, that basically is going to get me an exact value. And the only way to do that is keep moving this, I call it the gap, it's the error, this H, closer and closer and closer and closer to the value of interest. T sub zero is what I'm interested in. So I'm trying to get closer and closer and closer. Well, how close should you get? Well, it depends on what you're doing. If you're you know, building a bridge and you're off by a centimeter, is that a big deal? Probably not. If you're cutting, making an incision on somebody's eyeball and you're off by a centimeter, hey, you ain't operating on me, right? So no. So a lot of it depends on what you're doing and then also depends on how you're measuring. You know, what do you have to measure? Um, I think of things that, you know, we can measure time with our cell phones but we may not can get an exact, you know, a very, very milli, down to millisecond, nanosecond time. Okay, so it depends on what you're actually measuring. Now, I know what you're thinking, because I know what you're thinking. If, if this is my error in a perfect world, what, would, what do I want my error to be? Zero. But we don't live in a perfect world, and just looking at this formula that I have created from starting from the slope, turning things into an exact value plus some error, minus my exact value over my error, I don't think that I can use zero, right? Because what's going to happen then is I'm going to divide by zero and that can't happen. You have to realize over and over and over, this is still the slope formula. If you can keep that in your head that what we're using here okay, is a slope formula. Now notice, when you're using the slope, you had two points, right? That's what we call average rate of change. When we get it to a point plus some error, 
because we're really now just notice you only see one point here, right? T sub zero is my point of zero, my point of zero, my point of interest. That's when it's called instantaneous rate of change. So that's the difference between average rate of change. You're just picking two points. Instantaneous rate of change. I'm just picking one point and then I have some type of gap or error. All right, stay tuned.